guys. Well, this was a fun event, and uh, it's exciting. First MMA bout is going to be in Madison Square Garden in November. Uh, there'll be a uh, MMA event in upstate New York before the end of the year. Uh, and this is, besides the, the sports angle of it, it is a great economic generator for the state. Uh, Las Vegas, which has been the premier venue thus far for MMA, uh, has made, by some estimates, uh, about $200 million. We believe this is in excess of $100 million in revenue to New York State. So, uh, from an economic point of view, it's very good. Uh, the sport has had exponential growth and success. Uh, New York was the one state that hadn't licensed it, but now we have. So, uh, I also I think that uh, while we're a little late to the game, you're going to see New York make up uh, quickly because this is New York, this is Madison Square Garden, and I think uh, although there was a delay, we're going to be back in the game, so to speak, uh, very quickly. Questions? Um, Governor, um, tonight, what are you looking for in this debate? Um, I think the more debates, I support Hillary Clinton uh, for president, I think the more debates they have, uh, the better for Hillary, actually. I think the more people get to see her and understand uh, her command of the subject matter and her command of how to actually get things done and what she has done, I think the more she debates, uh, the better. So uh, I just think it's going to be a good night for Hillary and uh, I'm excited to be there. And how much of a role does New York play at this point in the process? How, how big of an impact do you have? Well, you know, New York, uh, historically, by the time the primaries got to New York, everything was moot. This is the first time where New York is really significant in the presidential primaries on both sides. Uh, it's uh, Senator Clinton's home state, so uh, there's that at play. Uh, Bernie Sanders is from New York, so there's that at play. So we have a whole mini drama here uh, f from New York. Uh, New York is, is still the media capital. Uh, it's still largely a democratic state. So we have a lot of drama, a lot of theater, and uh, that's good. The question is how do we use that to actually improve the discussion, improve the debate? And I think the more we can get away from the rhetoric of the campaign to the reality of the issues, the better. And that's why I think this debate is helpful. Everyone uh, has shown, uh, especially on the other side of the aisle, that they're good at name calling. Uh, that's, uh, that's not that instructive for the voter. Let's talk about issues, plans, what exactly would you do, how would you get it done. And that's why I think the debate tonight is a good start. Uh, Governor, a uh, couple of MMA folks that I talked to joked that the MMA bill should actually be called the UFC bill because the regulations might make it financially onerous for small promotions and amateurs to operate fights. What do you say to that? Um, look, we want to have uh, MMA is a, uh, uh, a dangerous sport, okay? Not uh, uniquely dangerous. There are many dangerous sports. Uh, boxing is dangerous, driving a race car is dangerous, football is dangerous, but government's role is to do everything that government can do to make it safer. And uh, we have a strict regulatory protocol that is in place. Uh, we want to make sure that the, uh, for example, the fighters are covered from a health point of view and from an insurance point of view. And uh, that's very important to us. And if a, an organization can't demonstrate that they are protecting the fighter, then we don't think that fight should happen. But is there, is there a plan to treat uh, smaller outfits or amateurs differently than the pros in terms of those requirements? And there are no, there's no, distinguish, uh, no distinguishing between big promoters and small promoters. It's promoters who can adequately protect their fighters. And if you can't adequately protect your fighter, then we don't want you fighting in this thing. Anything else, guys? Modernizing food laws. How will it affect small business? And also, when might it happen? We just, uh, I asked for a report on how do we improve the state's liquor laws. Uh, the state's liquor laws actually go back to prohibition. Uh, you have old blue laws that are still on the books and have never really been changed. 
So we did a comprehensive review of all the laws. Do they make sense? How would you change them? We have certain prohibitions against when you can sell alcohol and what hours you can sell alcohol. Uh, we had a task force that came back yesterday actually with a full set of recommendations and I'll be looking at those recommendations and then making a legislative proposal from those recommendations. I haven't gone through them uh, enough to have an opinion yet. Some of the recommendations just would ease the blue laws and allow sale of liquor earlier. For example, on Sunday, the early laws said uh, they, they limited sale of alcohol on Sunday because Sunday is a day of worship for some religions. So they're revisiting laws like that. But I haven't gone through it. I will. And then I'll have a legislative proposal that I'll be making. Thank you very Thank much, you. everybody. Thanks, guys.